we are recording. Um, may as well just roll from here. Sweet. Um, yeah, so we've got nothing to talk about on this video. I think what we should do first is say hi to everyone. G'day. <laughs> Glenn and Ben here. Uh, we are from the Good Movie Monday podcast and we're doing a little bit of a Tuesday night video. Normally we have a reaction video or something alike. Um, we were going to review a movie uh, called, what was it called? Play Again or Press Play, which is opening in cinemas this week. But COVID has struck the, the team. I'm the only one that's sort of unscathed at this point in time. So we didn't actually get to all watch it. So we can't really do a review of it. But just for the sake of putting it out there, it's worth having a look at. It's a time travel movie all about mixtapes and music and whatnot. And it stars, I don't know his name, but you know, uh, Bill Pullman's son that was in uh, Top Gun Maverick and he's in that open range or whatever it's called. Um, Miles Teller. No, <laughs> the nerdy one. The nerdy guy that sits in the back. Miles Teller. <laughs> anyway, no. um, I think it's, I think you're talking about Bill Pullman, son. Yeah, <laughs> I enjoyed the film anyway. So uh, look it up; it's it's pretty fun. Hey, you know there are some dots that we didn't draw together on the show on Monday, Ben. We talked about, amongst other things, Joyride Two. <laughs> right. I believe you talked about Joyride Two. So what I what I didn't draw, um, and we also talked about Hitcher Two, right? I talked about Hitcher Two. Once again, you talked okay. about Okay. <laughs> Look at you. You're doing a um you're doing a, a Jim Sheridan. <laughs> yeah. I don't like where this is gonna go. Do I, need <laughs> no. to, do I need to be here for this video? No, but okay, so yeah, that's, uh, that's that's exactly what I thought. Roadkill two, aka Joyride Two, directed by Louis uh, Morneau, who directed Hitcher Two. Amazing. And, like and didn't starting... draw that conclusion. Starring the two band members from Roxette. Because <laughs> they wanted to join the Joyride. That was the whole song. They saw the John Dahl version. They wanted yep. to join the Joyride. They uh, appeared in Joyride 2. Hmm. Electric Boogaloo. It's the, it's the sequel that could have been, mate. Like, Imagine. Same <laughs> truck driver. Uh, I can't recall. Candy? Is he still looking for Candy Cane? Candy Cane. <laughs> oh, I could have Mel's... sworn that. And I don't know if the voice... If the voice, the, the the whoever the actor is that, that does the voice is actually the actor who plays the the trucker, because the voice sounds like and now I can't remember his name, but Wild Bill from Silence of the Lambs. Oh, Ted Levine. Ted Levine. It sounds like yeah. him. Yeah, 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 yeah. Totally. Reverse in the mouth. I'm looking for. Any words know how to get in touch with Candy Cane? So this guy, Lewis Murray, he also directed Bats. Remember the movie Bats with Lou Diamond Phillips? Yeah, that was another. Geez, this guy seems to have just, he seems to be responsible for my greatest cinematic disappointments. What about Radioactive with Jim Belushi? Radioactive? Uh, retroactive? Yeah. Sorry, Retroactive with Jim Belushi, yeah. And Kylie Travis. That movie is fucking genius. Well, he directed that. Well, there you go. He's made he's made one out of ten ain't bad. What about Soldier Boys? Soldier no? Boys. Yeah, he did Soldier Boys. Is it Soldier okay. spelled S O U L, and it's about the the rapper? <laughs> Boys is spelled with a Z. Ah, uh, what else did he do? He did um, Final Judgment with Jeez. Brad Dourif, Crackdown in ninety one. Anyway, I just thought we'd draw some attention to this guy because why not? my jam <laughs> and have you got got anything else to talk about uh we can talk about gotcha no. <laughs> i don't believe we spent enough time talking about it on the show like he literally anthony edwards is a he's like just good at laser tag <laughs> and then he, follows, he ends up in west germany like fighting spies but it's okay because he's skilled at laser tag. Just sounds like that out there. sounds like an episode of Stranger Things. My chair's too low. Let me just there we go. Stranger still... Things. I wouldn't know about that because I'm not a teenage girl. Oh. <laughs> I like that this. I like that this whole video is just a retread of all of the bad jokes that we made in the podcast. That you made in the podcast. Well, I'm not the one who brought up Hitcher Two and Roadhouse Two. Because I wasn't joking. <laughs> I take such things very seriously. 
Yeah, and this is that's uh that's the joke. Ah, <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, I see. What's COVID this? hasn't uh, stolen you of a robbed you of a sense of humor, my friend. <laughs> no, it's it's still it's it's uh, it's just <laughs> even more tasteless. <laughs> yeah, I know. Bumper cleave, anyone? Yeah, bumper cleave. I think. I think. Did you take out? Did you? Will you have cut out? Uh, <laughs> yep. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> We don't want any of those new audience, any of those new listeners, to be offended by my uh, <laughs> offense. Not when, not when you're naming somebody. <laughs> well, it's true. I didn't, I didn't lie. <laughs> I didn't lie. I didn't tell. Like, I didn't. I didn't uh, misspeak. I didn't this slander is like a, anyone. This is like a private conversation. Yes, what happens when we don't come prepared? <laughs> I'm going to alternate between water and uh, tea. I should have. I should have the whiskey for this and one. The whiskey and the gin. I've got a big bottle of gin. That's good. Oh. Apparently, gin is good for colds. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Total whiskey is too. Brandy, brandy's good. Anyway, I brought to you by that, Dan Murphy's. Yeah. I noticed that uh, the, we talked about them briefly. Uh, I wanted to talk about the different ones. You only wanted to talk about one, and I'm, I'm not exactly sure on whose payroll you were as to why you only wanted to talk about that one, but I did notice that they, they are out uh, and JB Hi-Fi has a sale at the moment. So you can get nobody's fool and things are doing Denver when you're dead and the music of chance, which is the best of all of those movies. Uh, But you only wanted to, you're only interested in talking about nobody's fool. And every time I tried to talk about the other ones, you're like, no, not doing it. I was, look, I I don't remember exactly what it was, but I know for a fact I was trying to lay down a joke and you just pissed all over it. So I couldn't, I was trying to prevent you from talking about other ones so I could make a joke. And nobody's fool. I was going into, I was going to go into a Paul Newman rant and yeah, I just, I just ended up pulling back and letting you go. And you'll probably hear that in my voice if you go back and listen to the yeah, show. I could hear I could hear it when we were talking about it. I'm like, why is he so obsessed with nobody's fool? Like, don't get me wrong, I love it. I only watched I watched it again like a month ago. Yeah, and I totally thought you'd go along with me because of the fact that you had raved about it previously. About it. I thought, oh, Ben will be on this. I'll be able to have a bit. Yeah, I just I it's because you were so adamant about like just ignoring the other ones. So I'm like, <laughs> what, are we on the is, is, is this a paid for? Are we, we on the take? Like like if you got an extra feature or something on that nobody's full disc, I did actually buy right. some. I did buy some imprint titles recently during the last thing. Do you want to? Do you want to see them? Sure. I got uh, double jeopardy. That, we had uh, we, we actually, had Bruce Beresford on, on the, the uh, show show to talk about that across one hundred and tenth yeah. Street, the classic. Yep. Uh, and. There's the big stack. Audrey Rose. Great movie. I don't know why I bought it because I already have the cult cinema version and, you know, I don't know if it's the extra. Hey, (laughs) I'll swap you that for the Lost City. (laughs) (laughs) No, no. no. Uh, Bad News Bears. Yep. I also, a friend of mine actually sent me the US Bad News Bears because it's got one, uh, it's got, it's got a couple of extra uh, extras let's get jessica death mm-hmm. classic tam lynn which i'm looking forward to seeing these are you can oh. see how shiny they are they're still wrapped in the plastic so that's that's where all your money goes <clears throat> the gift we all know what that's about yeah, well, yeah we've seen that tiktok and kitten with a whip because i love good. that artwork and uh, a good mate of mine andrew netty uh does a video essay for this one and a great title and and margaret only watched her last night on um <laughs> grumpy old men <laughs> Jeez. What, what a movie. movie uh what was i was she was in uh i, was, I re-watched the offer while i while i've been sick i just wow. kind of, i went through the whole thing in one hit and uh i didn't realize that when when charlie bluthorn comes to the studio th- that first time it's Anne Margaret is the is the girl he meets because she looks nothing like Anne Margaret. She doesn't even have the hair of Anne Margaret. I there I question some of the casting <clears throat> in that show. Like yeah. as far as like actors, like personalities that only play like little background bit roles. It's like, come on, like you really could have 
for the for, for the fact they're not talking, you could have got someone that looks just like them. It looks a bit like like yeah, like ones I found were usually like the weird dad. like Diane. Something I mean, is I mean, happening. I'm losing all the audio here. Give me a second. I don't know what's happening. <laughs> this isn't me actually censoring Ben like before. This is the computer censoring Ben. <laughs> it doesn't like the cut of your jib, mate. All right, try now. No, you're gone. How about you're now? doing that on purpose, you son of a bitch. How about now? <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, back to my rant about the offer. Like the the Diane Keaton. The, the actress they played her like she, she they let her smile and that is it yeah i don't get james khan like he's he's in one bit but they give him nothing to do like they really yep. picked and choose picked and did and choose it did you know what they're going to cover in that show and i get that not everything can have time but considering that the the actress who plays al pacino's like wife for that 10 minutes in the movie before getting blown up has a bigger part than Diane Keaton and Scott James Khan. Yeah. And like they, they couldn't get, uh, they couldn't get Scott Khan to play Jimmy Khan. I know. And look, you know, he looks exactly like, I suppose he's too old now. But like <laughs> ama- amazing show. Like let's put it out there. Amazing show. However, I think the casting that bothered me the most, or, no, not the casting, the performance that bothered me the most was the Al Pacino guy because he did look and sound like Al Pacino, but I did not buy him being that um, submissive, submissive yeah. and that, um, what's the word? Just, I don't know what the word for it is. but like, he is. I cannot picture that guy in, what, 20 years' time going, because Ugh. you've got a fat ass! <laughs> <That's> right. <laughs> in, in, in heat. <laughs> I just but I that's right, but also like he'd already done like was it Panic in Needle Park yeah. beforehand? He's led a film. You can't yeah. tell me he's done a lead role and he's that much of a pussy coming into The Godfather. Like I just don't buy it. I would have thought he would be a passionate actor, but yeah, yeah. maybe questions a lot of decisions being made, but confidently. Yeah, you know. So I didn't buy. Maybe they were playing into the fact that that actor might have that demeanor. I don't know, but um. And yeah. then Marlon Brando, they make such a big deal about Marlon Brando being a pain in the ass to work with and getting him and he's great. And then they don't let him do any, then he's not in it for the rest of the film. It's like the making of it. But the guy who played him was great. You know, like it, the, the making of is all about the Teamsters. Yeah. yeah. Like the, <laughs> yeah. All right. And they only shoot. So they only shoot two scenes that you see. Yeah. And, and not one of them, not one of the scenes that they shoot is in the compound which get of getting the compound is such a big part of the show and then they never actually shoot there yeah see this is the problem too like you watch it a first time and you're you're enamored with it because you love the godfather you go back for a revisit you start picking this shit apart and the movie kind of loses a little or the show loses a little bit but yeah all the same i do hope they do another se- series of it's another a tough production one. i just i think it would have been a lot more interesting had it not actually been so about the making of the godfather if it would have just been the running of Paramount Studios at that part time, and The Godfather is just one of many films that are coming through it, and it's yep. just all Matthew Good mm-hmm. in the you know as Robert Evans doing all that stuff, that would have been a great show. Just, it just it could have just been Kid Stays in the Picture, the the, the, the show, the like yeah. And I don't understand. Like he actually comes, he turns into a pretty kind of you know fun character, but the the Colin Hanks character, whose name I can't remember, is not even real. No, he's fake. Like he's the he's one fake. that's not yeah. real. Like, why couldn't they just use the real guys? Maybe well, not only not only was his character not real, his character was fundamental in the storyline. Like, it's sort of... Yeah. That bothered me a bit too, I must admit. Like, don't fake something so important. Yeah. You know, but anyway. Hey, uh, we managed to... I was going to yeah. say, I guess there's no story if Paramount were just like, yeah, go make it. Yeah. Whatever you want to do. <laughs> that's right. Anyway, hey, we got through a video with uh, no planning whatsoever. Well done, sir. And let's do a lucky dip on Thursday. That'll be fun. Yes, I'm prepared.